I quit tennis and moved to Spain to play paddle. Now I'm in Valencia for my biggest challenge yet. Yes. The future, the paddle is number one. Can I compete in a new sport? Ah. Find out next. After wandering around Spain for a bit, I got lazy. I wanted to hear the pop of new balls, the court beneath my feet, and the rush of competition again. So I come to Valencia, an amazing city where palm trees grow between concrete and there's a paddle court on every corner. And this time, I wanted to take on my biggest challenge yet by testing myself against truly elite players. So I found Chaki, a player and coach with a deep understanding of the game. He regularly competed with pros like Carlos and Joaquin, who are unbelievable at paddle. Hola, soy Carlos Pelaez y soy de Cuenca, pero actualmente vivo y entreno en Valencia tanto en Sport City como en Vespa de la Academy. Eh, la cabeza es uno de los puntos más fuertes a trabajar en este deporte, ya que es un deporte de tanta velocidad de reacción, es tan corto y tiene, la pista es tan pequeña, 20 por 10, que ser muy, muy rápido con la mente, tanto para gestionar el, entre puntos, para gestionar el punto, para gestionar el banquillo, y es fundamental, fundamental, no perder la concentración en ningún momento. The padel is a, the best sport in the world, more of football, wow. okay? The future, the padel is a sport number one in the rankings. After watching the professionals in action, I was ready to get back on the court. I was already knackered. I had a lot of work to do. First, Shaki took a look at my volleys. I still had a tendency to punch the volleys flat like in tennis, which meant that they were bouncing higher off the walls, giving my opponent more time. So Chucky taught me to bend my arm more and chop the volleys with slice, resulting in a much lower shot that was harder to reach. On the backhand, he also taught me to extend my wrist to get some more depth on the ball. This is very important uh, more for the deep. Yes. Yes. I was still a bit confused about the difference between the vibora and the bandeja, but Shaki clarified it for me. The height at which you hit the ball. The bandeja should be hit higher above your head so that you can return to the net, while the vibora should be hit from a lower point and in front of you to generate a more aggressive shot. Both of these should involve a high elbow. He also stressed the importance of proper weight transfer on both shots. Often when you see the pro players, you'll see them hop onto their front foot as they hit the ball. Now this is definitely not something that came naturally to me, but we practiced and practiced and gradually we started to get there.
Defending off the wall was still my biggest weak spot. So Shaki suggested I stand a little further back behind the line to give myself more time. He also told me to lower my racket to reach those low shots off the wall. And always hit slice or flat off the walls and not top spin, which was something I tended to do because of tennis. After that, it was repeat, repeat and repeat until I couldn't feel my legs. Yes, perfect. Yeah, this is paddle. My smash was inconsistent. It was a bit easier than some other shots because of tennis, but sometimes I lacked enough topspin, which can be generated by shifting your grip no. more to the left yes. and arching your back to brush up Good. the ball. Okay, your elbow, your elbow in this shot, more, yes. It's a different Importantly, elbow. my elbow was often a little too high, which prevented me from generating more momentum yeah. and more, spin on the ball. Yeah. Missing is, is the spin. Yes, more quick the wrist. And But when everything falls into place, yes. there's no better feeling than smashing the ball Cer out of the cage. Los ¿Vale? Volea derecha, volea revés, and as my smash got better, I started to learn when to hit a vibora, yes. a bandeja, a rulo, and a kick smash, so that I was able to vary my attacks better. Now vibora. Yes. Now rulo. Perfect. Now it's mash. Let's go. Yes. Perfect. I was feeling good about my game, so it's time to get some match practice before I challenged a truly elite player. I'm here in the Museum of Sciences in Valencia. I've been training with Shaki Paddle. He, he brought me into match practice for a local team at Sports City, a team of guys who were all absolute killers. All of them were amazing at paddle. Um, yeah, and we lost a few matches, but I was playing with Shaki, so we won a few as well. I also played in a tournament, a local tournament. I'm still thinking a bit like a tennis player. My partner uh, was the same because he's just uh, transferred over from tennis a couple of months ago. So um, we had some similar, similar issues. We played three matches and we lost three matches. The level was high. The guys we played against were all just so experienced. They knew the walls so well. They'd clearly been paying, playing paddle for a long time. They all played at clubs, at, at teams within local clubs. I was feeling pretty down after getting beaten so easily. How was I ever going to challenge an elite player? The losses had hit me hard, but I hadn't come to Spain to quit at the first hurdle. I needed more time to put Shaki's coaching into practice and I needed to save money. Luckily, there was a free paddle court just outside our apartment. So me and my girlfriend started training as much as we could. Finally, it was time for the ultimate challenge, 
and this time I was facing Chaki, my own coach, in a match. The hard training, the fitness, the repetitions, it all come down to this. I tried to make the points as long as possible and wait for the moment to attack on the right shot. But Shaki was dealing with everything that I threw at him with ease. I kept pushing, hoping that maybe my efforts would pay off. I was struggling to keep up. And I was giving away too many stupid errors. But as the match went on, I started to grow in confidence. But whenever I felt more comfortable, Shaki raised his level again. I'd never played against someone with such variation of shot. He knew exactly which shot to play at the right time. I kept hustling, hoping that he'd make a mistake. And on his match point, I gave it absolutely everything. I hustled to return his smash, I hit a nice backhand and I came to the net. I scrambled to hit a lob off the wall. And just like that, it was over. I was beaten easily and I was exhausted, but I was proud of my effort. Playing tennis as a kid, it gave me a head start in paddle. But I still lacked the patience I needed to develop in a new sport. So for now, it's adios Valencia, and I'll see you soon on the court. Thank you.